father's house and everything like that to your family, why are you accusing me of this? So do God to Abner, and more also, except as the Lord have sworn to David, even so I do to him. To translate the kingdom from the house of Saul, and to set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah, from then even to Beersheba. And he could not answer Abner a word again, because he feared him. And Abner sent messages to David on his behalf, saying, Whose is the land? Saying also, Make thy league with me, and behold, my hand shall be with thee, to bring about all Israel unto thee. So Abner is basically pissed that he got accused for sleeping with one of Saul's concubines, and he basically sends somebody to um, talk to King David because he's ready to trade. He's going to switch and go and uh, to the side of King David to try to help David get control of all of Israel because he was pissed about this. So that's what he does. He sends somebody to let David know this is what I'm trying to do. So Abner sets out to trade on Ishbosheth, and he's going to meet up with David. Now, remember, I think I said that. Um, uh, David, he had support. He was anointed king by the south, the southern tribe of Judah, and this was of the northern tribe of Judah. So, if I said it reverse, that's that's what it was. But um, so uh, Abner's headed to speak to David, and he goes and he's talk, he talks to David, and David basically is saying to him, you know, do your thing, go get support, so on and so forth. Wait a little bit, but then you got to go because the people can't see that you're here. Because what they're doing is covert. So um, eventually Abner leaves and he goes to try to get support from the northern tribe to basically recognize to recognize David as the only king. So he leaves and then on his way in now you have uh, Joab and Joab is David's general. Now what happened was during those fights that the uh, house of David had with the house of Saul, uh, Joab's brother was killed and he was killed by um, Abner who just left they, just, they basically catch up with Abner and he kills Abner so you know when David finds out about it you know he's pissed he's like yo this dude was, was about to do this and you know he's going to help us out so the people in the northern uh, tribe are basically um, they hear about the whole thing and they are impressed that David didn't kill uh, Joab for what he did to Abner even though Abner was trying to help him out and eventually they didn't really like Ishbosheth at all anyway so two of his men basically sneak in his uh, room and they basically kill him and cut his head off brings Ishbosheth's head back to David now this is a supposedly anointed person of God and son of Saul so David is basically pissed when these men come back with his head and he's like you know y'all cowards y'all basically go into a man's room that's anointed who gives you the right and you cut off his head you know, this man is, is, is a good man and man of God. God is making sure he was in power, so on and so forth. We had our disagreements, but he still was a man of God. So David basically kills these men and basically cut off the arms and legs and hang them up to show people, like, you know, this is not what you're supposed to do against one of God's anointed, you know, sick, crazy stuff. So um, <laughs> this is what happens. So again, the, the people uh, in the North see this and everybody hears about what happened and everybody hears that, you know, even though these men basically brought the head of his enemy to him, that David was such a good man that he still, you know, punished these men for what they did. And he, that's not what he wanted. Um, the people was impressed by that. They didn't really had no choice anyway because he was the only person left to rule. So you had the north and the south basically join together. And um, this is how David becomes king of all of Israel. And he is basically anointed king of all, all of Israel after his enemies is basically uh, dead and gone. So, you know, that's basically the origin story for David having control of Israel when you go back and look. And at almost every point, you're going to see uh, David being, you know, faithful to God for a while. But still, you know, as it pertains to just being a good person, he's going out, he's murdering people, killing kids and babies and so on and so forth because God says they're not following him. So remember that. But you got to understand, you know, the elders anoint David king for all of Israel. The first thing David does is go to Jerusalem. Now understand, as I just said before, the Bible doesn't talk about these kingdoms that is being basically destroyed by the, by the Israelites. They never talk about the people and what they're doing and so on and so forth. But remember, he goes into Jerusalem. And what is Jerusalem to these people? Everything. So we're talking about 
David coming into Jerusalem is the foundation for Judaism, Christianity, Islam as well. It is the, it's everything. What we got to understand is one, it was called Jerusalem before David got there. And it was important to the Jebusites before David got there. These people had this land and been here for over a thousand years before David. So now it's important to these people. Now it says here, Jerusalem is a city in the Middle East located on a plateau in the Judean mountains between the Mediterranean and the Dead Sea. It is one of the oldest cities in the world and is considered holy to the three major Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. It says 1000 BCE. Bullshit. There's no King David around that time. As we understand it, we understand that the Egyptians was ruling that land during this time anyway. But we always hear about Jerusalem. King David, Jerusalem. But you also hear about, of course, Zion. Zionism. What are the Zionists doing? Zionism is connected with Judaism. Zionism is connected with Israel and the Jews. It's everything. You always hear about Zion, Zion, Mount Zion. And when you hear Zion, when you hear Jerusalem, the first thing that's popping into your head is religion. Judaism, Christianity is the first things that's popping into your head, but none of these belong to these people. They belong to the Jebusites who were Africans, black people. So Zionism. So it says here, Mount Zion. Mount Zion is a hill in Jerusalem located just outside the walls of the old city. The term Mount Zion has been used in the Hebrew Bible first for the city of David and later for the Temple Mount, but its meaning has shifted and it is now used as the name of ancient Jerusalem's western wall. Zion was already Zion before they called it Zion. The Jebusites called it Zion. Zion is hills. That's where they built their fortress. Their, um, they basically built like a fort there that was on top of the hill. When David came with the Israelites, they destroyed it and they built uh, what would be the foundation for their churches, so on and so forth. Uh, on that mount. But before all that, the Jebusites had basically a hilltop fortress there that they had built and they had established for a long time. And then here comes David to basically take it away from the Jebusites. Now I'm saying here, 2 Samuel 5 uh, verse 6 it says, And the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither, thinking David cannot come in hither. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, the same is the city of David. So that's basically what it says in uh, 2 Samuel about the Jebusites. That's it. David comes in there, basically takes the land from him. But when you read in the Bible, you already read about the Jebusites before. Now understand one, that uh, the Jebusites come from the line of Jebus. Jebus is the grandson of Ham, which Ham, as they say, is the African race, the black race uh, from the line of Noah. So if you remember back in Judges, um, Judges 19.10, it says, But the man would not tarry that night, but he rose up and departed and came over against Jebus, which is Jerusalem. This is long before David. And there were with him two asses saddled. His concubine also was with him. And when they were... By Jebus, the day was far spent. And the servant said unto his master, Come, I pray thee, and let us turn in into the city of the Jebusites and lodge in it. So you're talking about a city of people who don't worship this God of the Bible that we can see by reading the Bible that they were coming in and out of that city, that it was a city, that people were coming in and lodging in there, meaning that they, they had civilization that was established for over a thousand years before David. David comes in, wipes it out. There's no explanation. There's no reason. And as I talked about in the ancient history series, this is what the Bible is talking about when it's talking about the Israelites coming in and taking lands from people. These people are African people. And that's all it's elaborating on. All the stories are bogus. All the stories are put there to give you validity to the Bible one, but to really give you an explanation as as to what happened to these African tribes or these African lands that they don't even really talk about. But 
you are supposed to believe as a Christian or Bible believer that these people was just against God and God sent his anointed to come and wipe these people out because they was doing wicked, evil stuff. None of which the Bible really elaborates on, but they do elaborate on the sick, crazy stuff that the people that's supposed to be chosen by God is doing. And we have to ask ourselves, one, what could these people you know, have been doing that was worse than what the Hebrews uh, were doing? But it doesn't talk about that. So, you know, you have people that look at this and they don't really get the picture that it's giving you the conquering of African territories. David, a big part, taking Jerusalem from the African people, from the Jebusites, and then it becoming, you know, the staple, the promised land, the holy land, the number one place for uh, Jewish uh, worship. And it being the place that God establishes, reestablishes his covenant uh, in Jerusalem. And, and God basically stamps this as the holy land, the place. This is where everybody's supposed to come. And it's like, OK, but you took the name of the land from the people, you know, who already named it. They didn't rename it. Uh, David named it the city of David, but they still call it Jerusalem. They still call it Zion, still Zionism. And all of this stuff goes back to African people and not them. So. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't even know who the Jebusites is. And as I said, it's no proof of Jebusites, just like it's no proof of David. But it is proof that this land belonged to African people long before the supposed uh, King David existed, which there's no proof of his existence. So now, again, as I said, they're trying to paint this picture of these people being, you know, just normal, but somehow clinging to their faith in God, that God is forgiving them. So, you know, David, when they talk about him today, is supposed to be like this perfect, you know, Jew or perfect believer in God. And it's not the case. So, you know, just like all the other people been sinning. So we talked about before, as we as you read, you had judge after judge after judge come in, deliver the people. They keep on sinning. It's something wrong with these people that they are evil. They keep sinning, but these are God's anointed, his chosen people. So David is no different. David sins. God forgives David. So we know today David is everything. David is like looked at more so uh, than Moses. Uh, and Moses is the one that supposedly brought him out of Egypt. So everything is about David, David, David. Everything is about him. But he's a sinner. He's crazier than Moses ever was. But let me first remind you of why God kills Moses. Remember, God kills Moses. Moses is not allowed to see the promised land, even though he was the one who went through hell with the Israelites, them complaining and bitching and moaning and, and, and wandering and so on and so forth. He went through crazy shit. And he was sick too, but he ain't do with uh, what, uh, you know, anything crazier uh, than uh, David did against God. Our standards, yes, killing little kids, that's just sick. But against the Bible standards, you know, he was he didn't do nothing crazy. But remember, in Numbers, you had the uh, Israelites wandering. They're thirsty as hell. They feel like they're about to die, and they complain and like, "What the hell is going on, Moses? Give us some help." So, you know, Moses and Aaron basically, you know, ask God for help, and it says, "And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together." Thou and Aaron, thy brother, and speak ye in, unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water. And thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the, out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation and their beast drink. Okay, easy enough. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord, and he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them, here now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. This pissed God off. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believed me not, to sanctify me at the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. And that's it. This is why they wandered and didn't get brought into the promised land. Because Moses didn't give God the glory for giving them the water. Now when God was giving out those instructions, he didn't say, hey Moses, make sure to give me credit for this, alright? Because I'm doing y'all a favor, you know, I'm saving y'all life, make sure to give me credit. He didn't say that. 
So Moses just like, okay, boom, I'm going to give you all water. And this is the sin that caused Moses and the congregation their, you know, entrance into the, the promised land and the reason why Moses wasn't allowed in. That's, that's what it was. That's why Moses was killed. That's why he didn't go to Israel because he forgot to say, oh yeah, God gave us this water. As if Moses is all powerful, so on and so forth. And, and, and two, if this is what God wanted, when Moses struck that rock twice, why he make the water come out? 